Thursday night. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Atomic Bear Show, episode 17. We've already knocked out 17 of these things. But what's up, Eugene? What's up, Jenny? In case you're wondering, I appreciate y'all coming from Facebook. But we're no longer going to be doing the show live on Facebook. We're actually moving um, everything over to the Atomic Bears YouTube channel. It will be strictly on that. So if you're not subscribed, go subscribe to that channel and make sure that you do hit that bell. I feel like I'm getting some feedback in my headphones. If y'all hear any feedback, y'all let me know. I think I just fixed it though. But definitely going to put on the hat. Bam. Right here. So y'all know it's game time. We're going to be talking about bartering tonight. Trades for goods and services. And we got big Jeff with us tonight, who's definitely a pro on bartering. That's all he does. I don't even think he has a job. He just goes around and just barters with everybody. But, hey, he's making good with it. But, what's up, everybody? Again, I hope you're having a great Thursday. Welcome to the show. Hit that bell. Hit that like button. And we also got a giveaway. If y'all want to stick around and listen to me and... Jeff, rant for a little bit. We got a giveaway that we might be doing a little bit later that might help you with bartering. So, without any further ado, let's bring in my main man, Jeff. What you up to, dude? Hey, Matt. How are you? Okay. Like, uh, I'm doing good, man. It, it's awesome tonight. Um, like, no, we're just moving on to um, YouTube. Hopefully, everybody will just gather together around uh, the channel. I uh, will make everything easier, I think. But you know what? It's it's Thursday night. It's fun night, and uh, let's uh, talk about bartering. So yeah. it's funny you were mentioning that um, like I do bartering every day. Like like no joke, everybody's b doing bartering every day. Like if you think about it, money is just it's just making it more convenient. Like you know, the credit card, you know, the the bank card, your your cash money. Also, sometimes your item you might want to exchange. Uh, I know when you and I were kids, um, I'm a bit older than you, but not much. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we had cards, I don't know, like baseball cards, you know, mm. Star Wars cards, and we're exchanging. I give you three of these if you give me that one, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so it's something that is part of our culture, it, even though we don't call it bartering. Like, even when you go to work, you're exchanging your own time uh, for money. So you're actually a business, you well, know? The definition of bartering is um is trading goods or services without money, correct? Yeah, that's right. So money is just an intermediate convenient intermediate that makes it easier. So you don't have to carry the whole beef mm -hmm. uh when you want to <laughs> to exchange right, a beef yeah. or something, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh so money is convenient, but it's the same, it's it's when you buy something, you've like the money is earned from something. You just mm -hmm. it's an easy way to transact things that are more abstract. Yeah. Uh, so we the mindset is the same. That's my point. Is that the no, mindset yeah, totally. is the same? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and I don't remember. And I'm telling y'all, y'all probably have never seen this movie. It was subtitles throughout the whole movie, but it's Apocalypto or something it's about this tribe and something. Anyway, I know it's crazy. But they ran across another tribe, and they just they didn't they didn't know whether to fight or something, and then they laid fish down because I guess they were from like a river colony, and the other people gave them beef, and they were real just suspicious. They took it, and then they just kind of went on their separate ways. But that little trade right there, that that was significant. You know, even though they had never met, they knew. Okay, look, I'm just gonna put down this fish. You give me some of that meat. Bam trade is done yeah. so it's it's a i guess and sometimes bartering is a verbal agreement you know if you have to wait for it but if we're thinking of bartering just before shit hits the fan i think you're right as far as work goes that's probably the biggest bartering tool that's out there right now what do you think i think so i think so too um but you, you mentioned shit is the fan and i think this is um a lot of people call it the event. So you have the post event, the pre event. So yep. bartering items don't have the same value depending if you're before the event and what is the event? Is it that the grid goes down for a week, two weeks, a month, a year? Uh, is it that like half of the population are like 
two thirds of the population just passed because of a crazy virus? Um, is it that you know there's a like super uh, global you know like climate change and people have to adapt to it? Right. And yeah, then as mean. a sudden, mm -hmm. everything collapses. Depending when you where you live in the world as well, like the event might be just that your country is go going under war and there's nothing that works like supply is not working electricity is not working so right as we're speaking some people are going through what we would call the event because right. like think of countries like syria like or a lot of countries where war is has been raging um you know uh like this like you like second world war it's a bit like a few years ago but you know what i mean is is this yeah. has happened before so how did people survive? How did they manage to exchange what they had? And I think that's something we, 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 we need to think about when we think about the event. It's not necessarily something out of this world, uh, like crazy or like unlikely. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, so br this brings to the idea of what happened will determine what, what will be valued for, what, what's, what's being scarce, what's rare will, will will raise in price like it's the stock market basically well not really a stock market because it's in different ball box but it's the the fair exchange uh theory of uh, you know bartering is close to that because then something is rare in a place like will have a lot of value so right. gold might not have so much value in a place where there's no water and people are dying not drinking That's but exactly water will right. have a lot of value i think water so, will be the most valuable thing whenever you know, like you said, and I like I like the word you use, the event, because nobody knows what it is. You can prepare all day long, and then it'll be something crazy that we never even thought of. But the event, and I, I like how that that's what we're gonna call it, is the event. So when that happens, um, my mind just totally went blank on the event. But anyway, I agree. <laughs> what did you What did you just say? Like I totally was like mind blown by the word event. But of course. It um, but no, man, I uh, I agree, and I and I had a point. Oh, I know what it was, but the gold and silver, and I might, you know, seem dumb doing this, but it, the Canadian money, is it backed by silver or gold or anything like that? No. Okay. No. Um, so I think once let's just say the economy collapses and you know money is just paper, bam, you can burn it right there to start a fire. Because it's, yeah. it's worthless now. Everything supposedly is going to go back to gold and silver. And I think the first thing that I would think of is, do y'all remember the old dimes? The American dimes? Yeah. Like, and I think it's 1964. If you have any of them before then, it's uh, like I've got some buffalo nickels. And, you know, you'll still collect them. But, you know, you could have something like this. You know, okay, look, got a piece of silver right here. Collect these. Hey, give me a piece of that beef jerky, you know, or whatever. Bam. Yeah. But that was the first one on my list that I was thinking of yeah. when it comes to, like, trade. But before 1964, coins like this. Yeah. Boom. Do y'all yeah. have anything like that? Do y'all have any coins yeah. that are silver? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. The dime was made of silver, be be I think, the same year as the United States. I think, I don't know, we we've been following you or whatever happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they decided both countries to just cut silver. Probably it was too expensive at right. that moment to make the coins, that's right? What I was thinking, yeah. It was it was cheaper to melt the the, the coin and the, to to sell it. That's probably why. But um, uh, yeah. So, but the point, like the other thing to the other way to look at it is the econ the economy will still be there, even though the way to transact will be different. So, if you looked like two hundred years ago, people were bartering a lot more than today, but you still had money. Like a thousand years ago, you still had money. You know, uh, money was existing. So the point is, there will be a way to transact and, and money, like some piece of something will have some value because people cannot always carry their corn with them or cannot always carry uh, all their, their goods to barter. And um, money is so convenient. And because it's been invented a long time ago, I don't think it's going to go away. Um, now, what will become a standard? Is it like the coins will be valued a lot more? And it will become a different standard and way of communication. If it's not internet, now it's going to be what? Like newspaper, uh, press. 
like the technology and the knowledge of people who build that technology is not going to go away. It might be, might take some time to revert to back to that and a lot of pain. But, you know, I'm just saying like silver and gold might still have value, but it's just when the event happens and or like a few weeks and months after that, while the world is still or like the lo local where you where the event happened, still like trying to adjust. Well, these these very vital items will have more value if I'm thinking of, you know, water, as you mentioned, maybe food, ammunition, whatever is what, what protects you and what gives you the your basic needs. Right. So, yeah. So you mentioned water, like mm -hmm. you, like within Florida, if, if if I know the grid goes down for a month, do you think water would be a problem? Do you guys have a lot of uh, lakes or uh, fresh uh, fresh water or no, how does it look? Like? I mean, we definitely. I can. I'm always going back to Alabama. You know, if uh, <laughs> you know, if, if I can make it. But down here is definitely a lot of salt water. You know, right out that windows, you know, the ocean, the salt water. So it's I can't go out there and drink it. But you know, the in the summertime, any time after two o'clock, it's about a fifty percent chance of rain every day. You know, yeah. you don't ever know. Because but it's not gonna rain long, you know, it's just gonna and then it's gone. And that's you know, due to the heat and the you know, whatever, okay. So you could probably catch rainwater, but yeah, I don't, I don't see Florida being a problem as far as catching water. But well, well, we'll save it for another episode. I was going to tell you about a guy that got in trouble for collecting rainwater, but we'll stick to bartering. However, if you could somehow save up enough in even the bottles, and just you, because I'm telling you, I think water will be the number one thing. Because what is it? A third of the water on Earth. Is um, drinkable, if that's the word. Yeah, a seventh, I believe, or even less than that, if you think. Uof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, real quick, Jeff, let, let me tell everybody what's going on because I saw a few comments. So, guys, if you're just joining the stream and you're wondering why we're not on Facebook, we are no longer going to be live streaming on Facebook, the Product Probe channels. I don't see anybody from Product Probes on here just yet. But if... Um, you know, you're watching on those channels. We're going to strictly go to the Atomic Bear YouTube channel. So make sure that you are subscribed to that and stick around. We do have a giveaway for you. And by the way, y'all let me know. We're trying to get this little chat up, you know, just on the DL. But bartering, what's your three favorite bartering tips or not tips, but actually, no, I won't even say your three, but right now. Uh, y'all give me some bartering ideas, I guess would be the right thing to say, in the chat. Yes. All right, Jeff. Sorry, dude. It took me forever to get that thing out. But <laughs> I agree with you, dude. I'm all, I'm on board with the um with the water thing. I think water is going to yeah. be the most valuable thing, especially when it comes to – because everybody's going to want it. People are going to kill for water. Yeah. Fresh water when it comes to it. Um, Man, and that – you know, we could branch off into another subject, you know, as far as – you know, finding fresh water and you know using it for trade. But what's your uh, what's your second one, man? Well, I would say you know, depending on how you look at the um, uh, what's happening where you live, how things are. If you live next to the Amazon biggest warehouse, um, <laughs> and it turns out that the doors are open, you know, and oh, you just, yeah. just have get in, you know, in, yeah. yeah, they probably don't have water though, huh? you know, because uh, I did anyway, so. But this being said, like depending where you live, you have different needs. Like for me in Canada, like water here, like, well, I'm saying this and and you still need to filtrate filtrate your water to boil it, to take care of the germs and all that that, that thing. But water is not so much of a problem here. So if we have a lot of water, um, but um, we'll have to eat um, the place uh, during winter, um, especially if, if if we don't have electricity and in 1998 the old like a big part of the province because of a big ice rain just like the grid collapsed and there was no electricity around it was like for three weeks and it was very cold oh, wow. and um yeah so well, didn't montreal have power for three weeks no power for three weeks and much montreal was safe there was one lane one line left and it almost went down and they preserved it imagine all the hospitals and everything this like 
water distribution and montreal is the biggest city in in the, in the province so the montreal was all right but i can tell you it didn't they didn't tell that us then but the the authority were just freaking out uh, but in some places outside the uh, montreal is an island so outside the island uh they had um, no electricity for three weeks wow so they had to, to stay warm they have to Obviously, they had food supply because, you know, trucks were still driving and, you know, it's it was local. Right. So but it was a big problem. Right, during so you the had daytime, you know, you can open your windows and things like that. But yeah. And, and the problem there is like fuel became uh, rare. Mm -hmm. So people just empty all the tanks and it was just because they want to use fuel to war to to uh, like they had the um, generator to produce heat and uh, produce electricity. So generators were rare. So thinking of, of things like from that experience, generators and fuel, uh, at least on the short term, if you're thinking two or three years where the grid would be down and nothing would happen and you have to survive through that, then maybe fuel would become uh, very rare and uh, probably very expensive and, and, and not available for most people. So people would find other ways, maybe horses at that point. But, you know, so fuel... A uh, source of electricity and power like generators, I think, are also very good um, things to have around. And if you have that, then you can bar barter it. If you have extra gas, gas and it's hard to keep for a long time because it goes bad. So it's a whole thing to keep it like stable Ooh, and all they, that. But you They know. would have to have something really, really good to trade me if I had some gas and they needed it. So when it comes yeah. to bartering, because the value of that's going up. But not to backtrack us, but I do have a question about that because it's kind of fascinating. And, you know, not, well, I, I won't turn it dark, but there were some rolling blackouts. And um, I believe it's Los Angeles, and I could be wrong. It might be New York, but I think it was Los Angeles. And the pregnancies went up. And I'll let oh, you yeah. all take that for what, it, you know, for what it's worth. And you go, man, that's crazy. So when you said that, it's like it's not like you can even though it was 1998 I'm sure people had cash but there were still credit cards and you know things like that. Yeah. You can't go to the store and buy a generator because the thing, you know, the power's gone. I mean, what are you going to do? So I mean, I'm sure Home Depot or whatever might have had, "Hey, if you got cash, you know, we'll give you a handwritten receipt." You know, but if you don't have that much cash, and I'm sure they jacked the price up but yeah. were you there when the power like were you there for the yeah weeks? i was i was i never i missed the power for six hours so uh, i i filled my bath yeah. i filled all the, the all the containers full of water back then i was yeah. what what 23 yeah. so 22 even like so I, I was just thinking like oh what do i do so fill as much water as i i can thinking that if the power goes down people start panicking if if the whole line goes down no no sanitary uh, no water supply, you know, like everything stopped, then people will, and if everybody will try to get off the island, right? The bridge will be stop, will clogged, so I thought I need water for a few days so I can, like, let everybody rush out and go mad, and then I have time to escape. That was my thinking. But in those places, like, yeah, generators were sold, like, five times the price, uh, and, um, yeah, and, and, like fuel was a problem and a lot of people died as well because they brought like things inside and they started doing cooking inside with pot, with the open flame they started and the doing carbon cocaine? monoxide uh -huh. they started doing cocaine inside no cooking oh. <laughs> sorry for i was like golly <laughs> i was like that's some damn they're like you know what, what? Do the power's here. out let's just do it <laughs> But cooking, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but uh, just coming back to bartering, yeah, yeah, like yeah, at ahead. that moment, yeah, at that moment, yeah, I, I moment, I just believed that, like, having hot stuff, a hot place, was worth a lot. So people have paid money or paid something to have a hot place because they were all freezing. Yeah. Um. You know, that's yeah. If you think of uh, something like you know, uh, um, something more drastic like a war, where you, like, it's it's gonna be like your life is it, it, there's not much choice there it's gonna be you don't know a month two months three months one year yeah more and more and you decide to bug in uh to stay in your house now what do you need and so just to add like to fuel and generator i think um for the long term things like skills and um items that will help you producing food 
So I'm thinking, for example, uh, you know, gardening seeds. Um, I'm thinking um, if you have um, any gear to help you to be more efficient at gardening, uh, fishing, fishing gear as well, like fishing nets, yeah, if you're uh, fishing water. rods. Yeah. So being able to bring food and contribute to society by bringing food, this will be highly rewarded. And I think that's that's probably my next step. Like if you think in the long term, you go to seeds. Um, and you need to have the skills to be able to collect the new seeds and have the right source seeds that are, you know, heirloom seeds um, and non-GMO that you can actually take and receive and collect and receive and have developed the skill before it happens. So you become a, like a super asset for the community, you know. Yeah. And with hunting, you know, I'm a big hunter and I have, you know, and I always say, you know, if let's just say it's this weird, you know, we're going the conspiracy side with it to where it's just like the government's coming after you, but you can't shoot a gun, you know, because I know how to hunt. I can deer hunt. I know how to I clean them right. I'll clean them during the field, start a fire right over here, and I've got food. Now, having that trade that people don't know how to do these certain things, I could barter my services for it. Say, okay, well, I'll go kill you a deer, but I'm going to need... 16 gallons of that water right there and i'll give you this you know blah 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 but i think having that trade but then i also get to thinking you know if i had a yeah i've got a bow but i'm in a tree i'm thinking now i'm not even trying to bug out and i miss deer with the bow all the time so i'm just thinking about how hard it would be if i had to kill one I'm like god like you know and you're weak and you're trying to pull it back but anyway there was I think it's my headphones, man. Is do you hear feedback on your end? I, I, I'm not hearing feedback, but I hear me. Oh, it's better now. Maybe the, um, maybe the wire. You hear that? Yeah. Uh oh. Hey. It's good. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's how we do it on the Atomic Bear Show. But what's up, everybody? Let me give a big shout out to Butch and Nikki. And William, also, I received my Amazon survival kit this evening. That's what's up. William, what up, Spearhead? Chub to Big Richard is in the house with us. And I thought I saw Jenny up there floating around. But again, guys, if you're wondering why we're not on Facebook, I mean, heck, if y'all are here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Because we are going to be doing this thing from now on on YouTube. And we're going to try to blow this sucker up. You like how I counted that out right there, <laughs> Jeff? But so, go yeah, ahead, I, man. I just want to say, like, as, as it, Butcher said, he got, like, some people got their survival kit. So yesterday, we had a massive uh, promotion on Amazon. I'm trying to get this survival kit up the ranking. Oh, did y'all so, do a giveaway? Yeah, I, like, it was not a giveaway. Uh, this is a pretty expensive item. So, uh, but I gave it, like, at uh, $20 instead of Fifty dollars, and a lot yeah. of people got their uh, their kit. So I'm I'm like, congrats, guy! But not everyone has got one though, because uh, there was a limited supply of that. Yeah. Uh, we decided to uh, raise the price and and cut the deal at some point because there were too many people. Uh, uh, <laughs> but it was very popular. Yeah. Uh, this being said, if you got yours, look, just just wait, look at it, be like, make yourself an idea of what it is, and if you like it or not. Like, if you have any problem, just just. Send us an email at support at the atomic bear dot com. Um, we want to know if something goes wrong. If it goes well and you like your kit, um, uh, just saying, like, just go to Amazon and just honestly, with with like tr like your truth. Not I'm not trying to bias anything here, but write us a review. Like this is worth um, this is worth a lot to us, and it, it's what helps us to just uh, being able to uh, rank up the the Amazon scale and and eventually be seen. And that's how most of our products now on Amazon are pretty popular because people are, are seeing it and they like it. They write um, good reviews because they like it. I'm not talking to everybody who's buying, right? right but right. that would make a huge difference for us. So if you have just two minutes and eventually I'll send a message with a link, but it's easy. You just have a link, uh, go to your account and what you bought. And I think you find out how to write a review. So it makes a huge difference for us. Yeah. Yeah. And it definitely does with the Amazon thing because I... Um... You know, I do a little bit of selling on Amazon, kind of like you do. And 
and I'm always worried about reviews. And then when I go to buy something, I always look at the reviews. And if I yeah. see like three stars or one star, I don't know if you do this, but there could be all these good reviews, but I'll see that one negative review and I'm like, hmm. I'll start thinking about it and trying to find other ones. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go for it. And I end up liking the item because you can't, yeah. you know, honestly, man, when it comes to Amazon, this the saying you can't please everybody. Yeah. I mean, it could be the best thing ever, and then somebody's going to find something wrong with it. But, yeah, man, I think you got, what, four and a half stars on all your products, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, apart, apart from the bracelet, but, you know, like the bracelet, a lot of people don't know how to use it. Yeah, they don't. And, um, oh. Yeah, yeah. You have to take the paint off. Yeah, you have it. That's it. Mm -hmm. You have to take, but the bracelet is the number one selling bra paracord bracelet on Amazon as of now. So nice. I'm pretty proud of this uh, this product. But like you have to remove the paint and then strike it. And there's a technique to it. And it's not everyone, everyone gets it. And some people just don't like it. So, but in that category, a lot of like most of the uh, paracord bracelet have four stars or less. So it's just kind of a category average. But yeah, just make I mean, sure that you use your teeth, everybody. To scrape that thing <laughs> off, yeah, that's the best way to do it. Don't use the tool. That's not my words. That's Jeff's. <laughs> Don't come back hey, at me for it. <laughs> hey, Matt, I, I want to like, – so for, in terms of bartering, I would like yeah, to have your take on it because yeah, for me man. it's not so much of a um, concern, although it should be. Yeah. Um, ammunitions and guns. Yep. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, I guess it depends on the – if you have the ammo that they have – the gun, if, if they have the gun, you have the ammo for. Does that yeah. make sense? So yeah. if I have a 45, all right, and I got plenty of stock on 45, but they have a 9 millimeter, the trade's not going to go well. Yeah. So you kind of so, want to have a popular type gun. Which one is the most popular? Is there like a, is it the 9 millimeter is the most popular, or is there another type of ammunition that is the, like, if, as far or is as, it like? As far as handguns go? Yeah, I guess I'm not sure if rifle is more valuable than handguns, but I would yeah, say that. Yeah, in a survival situation, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. You know, I think the 22, like we talked I, about it before. Honestly, I, I think that, that's the best survival gun out there. If you're going to only pick one gun, it's got to be a 22. Got And the ammunition is so light, right? They compare, like, uh, I used to have a 22. Uh, we, we all did, right? And, uh, you know, ammunition is, is so light, and then. Um, you can hunt. It might be hard to get a big deer with it, but I don't know if you've ever tried. Yeah, um, I've, shot, I've shot so much. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Did uh, it work? Yeah. Uh, well, man, I don't. I don't want to tell the story because it's kind of. It was when I was in high school. I'll tell y'all a funny story one day about a twenty-two and a deer, <laughs> but we'll save that one. But you shoot them in the neck. I went with my aunt oh. when I was little, and um, you know I couldn't really shoot. I was probably. I mean, I'm, dude, I've been hunting. I would sit in my dad's lap when I was like four, and he would hold it and put the gun up to his shoulder. I would look through the scope and line it up and squeeze the trigger. I mean, I've been hunting since I was just a kid. But wow. um, my aunt took me, and um, I wanted to hunt, you know, with my own gun, so I got a 22. And you aim at their neck, or you shoot them in the head, and you can kill them. But it's... Uh, Anyway, I don't, I don't want to run the story, but yeah, a 22. But then again, you know, you're out there and squirrels, raccoons, you know, yep. stay away from your armadillos. You can even eat possums. I mean, and that's down here where I'm from. I don't know what you've got up there. Man, y'all got all kinds. you got bears. I don't know. You shoot a damn bear, I guess, a hundred times with that 22. Yeah, you need you need a lot of round for uh, for a bear with a 22, though. Yeah. I, I would be uh, pretty scared. You want to be... Um... Across a big river. <laughs> Man, um, you know what I just got to thinking about? If you skinned a bear out, like, how would you keep it unless it was wintertime? Because it's going to go bad before you eat the whole bear, right? Yeah. Hmm. So that could be a thing. Is, um, what, smoking? If you knew how to smoke meat, that could well, be they used something to use you salt. They use salt to protect the meat. So let's say you, you just get your meat. Um, and you don't have like a freezer or if it's, if it's warm, like you can dry the meat. You can, I, I'm not an expert, obviously, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. but I know that you can, you can dry the meat. Uh, you can uh, use salt for that, like to help the, the, 
the first layer of um there's a, a process i <laughs> gotta talk about it right now never done yeah. it but i it's it's known so you just suspend it and you let it um drip and then put salt on it to get the um it's not as simple as that but more or less so salt definitely is a, an item for short term short term and long term because unless you live next to a salt you know mine um like it's something that is imported or is carried away from like from long distance so salt and spices um like especially salt though because it's a ver very important item yeah. and to uh conserve food um and just enable uh to, to enhance the quality of what you're eating um especially if you're stuck with mres you may want to have a bit of a uh, fresh uh, meat and fresh fruits and that or fresh vegetables but over winter it's going to be hard to uh like or over time where you're not producing it it's right. going to be hard to keep it so you want to have maybe vinegar to take care of them. So all these items, especially salt, because it never goes bad. Sugar never goes bad. So you want right. to have a pile of sugar and salt that you can be, you can barter, you can exchange for whatever you need, uh, other things you need. Yeah, so coming back. That. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying salt is, an, is a good one. Because even if you had enough salt, you know, and I don't know if this uh, is actually true, but they say if you have a cut, on your hand to go swim in the ocean and everything because the salt water will actually help it, you know, and I don't yeah. know if that's true, but let's just say that it is true just until somebody in the chats can fact check me, but that if I had a cut, you know, using even salt and let's just say you have nothing else, but using the salt water, yeah. you know, soaking your hand and something like that. So totally. yeah, I agree. Having salt was a big one. I was thinking coffee. You know, like instant coffee oh, yeah. And stuff. Yeah. So the vice, the vice things like coffee, tobacco, alcohol, these will have some value because you know, like because like saying vice, but it's just um, when you're used to something, you lose it. Like having access to it becomes like a huge thing. I don't know if you you've been watching The Walking Dead the last season, but uh, one other thing they use for bartering is oh, do this for us and we'll let you watch a movie. You know, what? so they got like. Yeah, Wait. so they got all oh, the movie. Like, let's do it. But I was just thinking, if it's been like seven years, you never, you haven't watched a movie or anything. Having access to that is just like mind-boggling, right? So yeah. it becomes like do I don't this know. And we'll let you watch a movie, and then that's... you get there, and it's like some like Christmas with the cranks, just some crappy movie, and you're like, <laughs> oh my god, I bartered all my food to watch this crappy movie. But if they were showing like The Godfather, you'd be like, well, okay, I'll probably try. I'd have to know what movie it was beforehand. I don't know. But you know, you know my, my challenge with like a lot of things you think about like gathering for bartering, like the child, like there's a tension between do I stockpile stuff mm -hmm. in case something happened, meaning that do I have to spend all this money and stockpile and, and, and risk it? And the bigger the item is, like water takes a lot of room. Um, what else takes a lot of room? I would say, um, well, salt and, and sugar. Well, depending on how much you want to right, pile. Depending on how much, yeah. No matter how much you stockpile, eventually this will go up. It will de be de depleted. You might have had everything you needed to build like, you know, a house or built a new house, or a new world for you, for your community. By the end of the day, you'll be limited. So someone in the chat, I don't remember who it is, but said, you know, honey will be important. So I think so. The yeah. better way to think about it is how do how do I produce honey? I, I know it's not easy. You need to have some supply of bees. But how can you organize something? How can you build a knowledge to be able to to make honey? So right, you don't yeah. have to stockpile it. You're just ready to go. Same thing with seeds. And talking about seeds, I think that would be logical if we give this away. I don't know if there's any gardener around, uh, but this is uh, one of our products. It's oh, a, a seed yeah. pack. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's called Armor Garden. It's um, <laughs> no pun intended. So heirloom seeds from for preppers. So this is a, a source in um, Oregon, um, and these are like there's twenty thousand different twenty thousand seeds, uh, thirty two different varieties. Obviously, the 20,000s, there's like you won't have a lot of corn seeds in there because it's very big, but you'll have a lot of um, uh, so smaller ones 
a lot of lettuce, obviously, cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, some corns, a cucumber, eggplant, kale, lettuce, uh, pumpkin, radish, different kind of pumpkin, um, turnip, tomato, Swiss chard, squash. Squash is an amazing um, uh, vegetable. Actually, it's a fruit, but, <laughs> but it's an amazing thing to grow. There's a lot of things in there. So it's a good starter kit. Um, and to, like this would last, it's well packaged, sealed in a bag. This will last at least three years. And I'm saying three years to be conservative because seeds, no matter what you do with them, eventually they go bad. So um, that's the unfortunate thing with seeds, no matter what you do with them. So the weights package, it, they, sh they will be good for three years in the, in the pack. And in the meantime, you can sprout them in practice because there's a lot of them in there. So you can practice. Yeah, I was go that's a good idea. I like that. And in, in the back, you have some information about planting. And I think you have the link to the, yeah, the atomicbear.com. You can find instructions there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a gardening book that you can find at the atomicbear.com slash training. It's on the back. It's easy to find. But this is what I, I think we should be giving away tonight. Um, and spring is um, is happening. So what do you think, Matt? Dude, I honestly, I was thinking that this is definitely a great item to have. And by the way, if y'all been hearing an echo the past few shows, now I'm hearing a different echo. You're not going to believe this. I had a pair of headphones that were cut up, and I didn't realize it until I took these off. So hopefully the echo is gone. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. But no, these are, I actually have a, you know, package of these in my bug out bag. But I'm going to take them out because I don't want to open this one up. But I'm going to take them out and practice. Exactly what you said. There's enough seeds in this some bitch that you can just sit there and practice. Like, okay, boom, bam, boom. All right, I'm going to grow carrots and I'm going to try eggplant and peas. You know, whatever. You have so many options to practice with and to kind of get the so Anyway, I, I think that's a good idea, man. Now, I know that we've been changing things up, and y'all y'all bear with us. We are going to get this thing down, and we're just trying to grow it. So next week, we might be on a whole different platform. You don't know, so make sure that you <laughs> stick around. But, Jeff, how do you want to do this giveaway tonight, man? What are you thinking? Well, um, I think... I think um, one of the things, like one of the thing we we want to know is what you guys are are thinking in terms of bartering, and yeah. it's not only useful for Matt and I and everybody who's uh, who's listening, but everybody who's going to um, be reading the comments later, I, tomorrow and a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, the comments can actually help people thinking. So what I was thinking is if we say um, something like. Uh, Someone type in the comments on the YouTube channel, uh, the Atomic Bear YouTube channel, the word bartering column, and the three items they, they uh, think are the most valuable for bartering. So just the word bartering and the three items uh, they think they're the most valuable to for bartering. So we'll compile all the, um, the answers, and I'll show you a trick, Matt. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but I'm going to use Siri. Let's say there are 50 different comments. Hold just want... your thoughts. Hold your thoughts. Hold your thoughts. Yeah. Just do what Jeff said first, and then we'll explain how we're going to pick the winner. We do it. Fair because enough. Because if, if we tell them how we're going to do it, then they might just try to comment like real fast. Anyway, all we need is three bartering items. Is that correct? Yeah, three. three. So three of your favorite, three of your worst Three, three, you can put the Empire State Building, camels, and then beef jerky. But make sure that you have some bartering tips. Yeah, and I have the word bartering because it Correct. will help us to search it later. Bartering and your three items. Right. We want bartering to rank again, guys. We're doing this low-key, trying to rank up. Y'all got our back. Now, Jeff, I want to show them. Um, now, have you tell, tell me about this Atomic uh, Pen, your new one. Well, actually, these are not new ones. It looks looks like it's a new one. Yeah. Um, so we are working on new ones in, in, the, in the background, and I've shown some of the one with a knife on it, and and there's a lot of cool things coming. But this yeah. video was just to showcase. So a lot of people say, is can these pens actually break? 
a car window. Oh, like, is this a car the window one? I'm sorry, dude. I yeah, it I can't is. Really keep yeah, going, it is. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then I, I I reach out to the crew and ask them, hey guys, I need a video that will um, explain what the fans are about, and I want you guys to go in the scrapyard and break tons of car windows just to prove the world that these things are working. Yeah. So uh, the crew went. I'm I'm not in any way a, a photographer, a videographer, but they went and they just film it and they just like make an amazing story about the fans and it's what the, the the video is about cool man well what i'm gonna do is play this and then actually while you're um while you're up on the screen i need to move some things around man okay. so <laughs> go ahead now what i mean by that is i'm gonna be i, I don't ever cut this other screen on because i don't ever use it but this would have been a good time to do it so i need to be reading comments while i play this video oh i see so, boom, here's the video, guys. Introducing the Atomic Bear line of everyday carry tactical pens. A collection of high-functioning, utility-driven, defensive writing tools. The SWAT Pen, an anti-slip grip ballpoint that slides into a practical heavy-duty nylon belt sheath. A tactical pen that gives your writing a smooth finish. The MTP-6 pen, a high utility concept with a dual mode flashlight. Featuring an easily assembled multi-tool to take on everyday tasks. Built for preparedness and tailored to fit the needs of the individual. The Rebel pen, a sleek tactical writing instrument with a below the radar design elegance constructed from unbreakable military aircraft grade aluminum. Each pin comes equipped with a defensive glass breaking tungsten tip on the business end which can be quickly deployed in a reverse grip position for maximum striking power. All of these pins are machined for perfect weight and balance and textured to provide a perfect feel. Built to take a beating and give it back in spades. The Atomic Bear Everyday Carry Tactical Pens. They're not just pens. There's something more. I'm not, I cannot hear you. Is it me? No, it's me, man. Listen at me just talking <laughs> to myself like, hey, I'm, I'm just doing this. Good. <laughs> Cause I was just I was saying a bunch of cuss words when I came back, so it's a good thing that they didn't hear me. <laughs> no, but um, so as I was looking through the chats, this is kind of what I got out of it, man. Um, oh, there was one person I need you to re-comment because I think it was Spearhead. Spearhead, do your exact same comment. Maybe switch it up. And just put the word bartering in there so you can be eligible for this giveaway but we've got a few so jeff go ahead man how are we gonna do this thing so matt you tell me how many people commented um and i will ask i will ask the phone to pick a number a random number between one and the number of people who commented okay so while i pick this number which one of your like if you had to pick one of the pins which one's your favorite out of the ones you got um it depends um i like the um the rebel one because uh, the rebel one is uh easy to carry it's very sleek um but it's not looking as badass as the uh the swat pen so i like the swat pen because you just you feel it in your hand it has a great grip it's a bit heavy duty and you just feel you have a great pen that will last uh, long um the, the most versatile one, that's the one I would put in my everyday carry um, um, pouch or a, a one that I would keep in my car or um, um, if, if your wife wants one or your, your girlfriend wants one or if you're a woman, put in your purse. You got a flashlight, you get a, a, a glass breaking tip and uh, you got a great pen as well. So they, these are different depending. So if I'm going out uh, for you know, a, a date, I... But my girlfriend were just going out. I will keep. Uh, I have the rebel in my pocket. 
Uh, if I'm going to work, uh, I might have the swap pen with me, but I will always have access to the uh, MTP6 pen um, if I'm going out either in the car or something, some, somewhere else. It's just very practical. Yeah. So is, I don't have a number one favorite, right? It's the, it does depend on what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, Stanley, if you um, if you'll recomment your, you know, comment, but put the word bartering in front of it, it looks like we're going to be at 10. Now, oh, okay. I could have been, you know, but I, because I'm looking for the word bartering in front of it. And also, when I had Facebook in here, you know, it kind of like visually would do it. But let's just go with that and then yeah. uh, see what we're working with. And then I'll pick the winner. So how are you going to do it? So this is uh, my iPhone. So I'm going to call Siri. Hi, Siri. I'm going to speak French to her, actually. My own is in oh, French, which is a bit annoying. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I love it. Choisis un nombre entre 1 et 10. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No. She didn't Wait. understand that. Choisis un nombre entre 1 et 10. What? Yeah. I switched to English. <laughs> She's not getting it. Yeah, you switched to English. <laughs> oh, I need to, uh, to get in. Okay. Choisis un nombre aléatoire entre 1 et 10. Oh. What? And that's, that was supposed to be very smooth. It always worked apart from one we're live. So another try. Yeah, yeah. Choisis un nombre aléatoire entre 1 et 10. Number four, I ask her, pick a random number between one and four. Oh, she, 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 didn't, she didn't speak it out loud. Yeah, <laughs> she said four. Try to do your assist. What did I just say, Jeff? I said something in French. Yeah, that was that, that was very French, man. <laughs> um, so we got number four. All right. Yeah, number four. Um, I tell you what, I think I know who got it. But do you still have the um? The little survival packet that everybody can get for free. Do you still have that thing on the download? Oh yeah, you mean you mean the guide, uh, the um, the guide, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. me. Tell me about it. I'm so, gonna pick a number. Yeah. Yeah. So to get your um, your um, uh, the, it's called the ultimate um, survival uh, ultimate preppers guide or ultimate survival guide for preppers, something like that. I just forgot the name. It's very easy. Theatomicbear.com forward slash guide theatomicbear.com forward slash guide. Um, and in there, you just put your email address and we'll send you the link to the uh, the, the PDF. It's uh, about 104 or five uh, pages guide where you you go through shelter to a lot of um, uh, a lot of skills, a lot of items, a lot of um, information there that will get you started or maybe get you thinking about your uh, your prepping. So I think it's um, a good starter guide and it's for free. Uh, just enter your email. For most of you, anyway, I do have your uh, emails, and you probably already have the guide. Uh, so if you don't, just go get it. Go get um, it. I want to say if you want to do gardening, uh, you can also go to theatomicbear.com. We have a, a like menu item that says instructions. Click in there and uh, find the seeds. And in the seeds instructions, there's a link to a, a massive, uh, uh, we we'll call it the gardening Bible. Uh, so just click there and you have a big PDF and if it's something you like, you can print out the part that you, that you want to read about. But in there, we cover many veggies, how to collect the seeds, how to plant them, to grow the seed, to, to sprout them, to plant them, to um, harvest them, to uh, collect the seeds again for next year. We also cover, you know, uh, organic um, uh, pest control. And a lot of things that are needed when you grow your uh, your uh, your veggies, and different kind of veggies. So no matter no matter where you live, uh, you'll have access. You, there at least few of them, at least probably many of them, will fit your climate. So have a look. Uh, these two guides uh, are for free. Just grab them. Cool. And Jeff, nobody actually won tonight. So good night, guys, and we'll see y'all <laughs> next week. No. I actually, I think we had old Michael win tonight. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show y'all what I was looking at just in case. Now, 
If y'all can hear me, let me double check. So, this is what I'm looking at, guys. So, when I started the stream, and again, we don't have any Facebook, again, because we're just doing YouTube, but when we started, I think Butch was the first one, so we got Bartering. Then we had Spearhead, nope, then we had Jenny with two. Then we had Richard with three. And then I think right there with Michael, yep, Michael won it with bartering. And then he says water, food, and heroin. I don't know why he put heroin in there, Jeff. That seems a little weird. <laughs> but that's okay, man. That's what Michael likes, and that's what Michael gets when he does it. So congratulations, Michael. If I'm wrong, guys, y'all let me know from what y'all saw on my end. I know it might look a little bit different because of the time lapse and the time, you know, things on there. But as y'all can see from my end, I think old Michael won it tonight, Jeff. So congratulations, Michael. You're going home with the seeds. And like Jeff said, man, try some of them out. You know, plant them. And then that way you kind of get the hang of it. You can test some soil. You got 20,000 seeds. And then, you know, put the rest of them in your bug out bag. But congratulations, man. And guys, again, bartering. You know, I didn't get to get into a lot of the stuff that we wanted to. I know that this is long, but let me ask you all this. And, Jeff, you can kind of jump in on this. I know that we're running super long on this episode, but what do you all think about maybe me and Jeff doing a podcast maybe with a little bit better audio and us sitting down and it being more of a conversation type, you know, thing? We won't be doing it live but we can really focus on certain episodes. I know that we were thinking about doing the homeless episode too, but now that we're strictly focusing on YouTube, we can upload content. We can really hit it big. But what's your thoughts on that, Jeff? You think we should try to do some type of podcast? I think it would be cool. At least yeah. take our videos and then repurpose them in th terms of podcast because like sometimes I drive somewhere, drive um, work to work or I drive to a, a place and I, I just want to listen mm -hmm. so to the news, but after a while, the news are just repeating themselves. So I just put a podcast yeah. on, and I, I just, I just relax, and I, so instead of moaning about the traffic, I just uh, relax and listen, and you know. So yeah, so I like, I like that. I, I think a lot of people like to consume content this way, so it could be, um, it could be interesting. I don't know if, if, if um, we'll have a lot of people uh, listening, but if we're already doing a show or a, a presentation together. Um, then I think a podcast would just be repurposing the the work while you're putting it, and we can spend some more time maybe to organize our talk and maybe make it a bit more concise. Um, but I think um, that could be an opportunity. And and like if you guys have a preference or if you guys um, have ideas and just shoot shoot it our way, just comment. Uh, you can reach us on show at theatomicbear.com. Actually, Michael, um, uh, just. Before we yeah, go, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to let you know, please, please, please send us your uh, shipping address and shipping phone number so we can get you uh, your seeds ASAP. So um, just show, S-H-O-W, at theatomicbear.com. And uh, this way we'll uh, be able to um, um, just proceed uh, the, the order, with the order. Cool, man. And do that's it. Me and you are going to have to barter. And guys, again, with these short time constraints, and I guess now that we're doing YouTube, we can go a little bit longer, you know, and we're just going to torture y'all and just make y'all wait no. for the giveaways. But no. y'all know we love you, and thanks for watching, guys. And Jeff, do you got anything else before we get out of here, man? Well, that's it. I want to say yeah. thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, thank you for being so, so much of a supporter of uh, the show. Uh, supporters of our brand because you know without people supporting us without fans we don't exist and i think our mission is very important and critical so thank you so much for being there and um, i promise something i want to be there for you guys i want to make sure that uh, we come up with new ideas new items and uh, we push um, the content side so you guys can um, further your skills for your learning and also build a community so Last thing I want to say before I say goodbye is if you're not part of the Atomic Bear Elite group on Facebook, we have a closed group where nobody outside can actually read, read what we're writing in there and people asking questions, sharing articles, videos. Go there, ask to be uh, approved, 
And usually within two or three days, you would get approved and you get inside the group. And we have some special um, discounts sometimes that run there. And we also have very cool discussions. And I ask you, what do you think about this product? And come, people come with product ideas and people come with like, like very interesting questions and very interesting ideas. So it's uh, amazing. So the Atomic Bear Elite group on Facebook is, um, is a place you want to hang out. And uh, after that, I think I'm, uh, I'm spending enough time talking. Yeah. So um, thank you guys for being there. Yeah, man. And again, guys, this show went a little bit long, but y'all know me and Jeff can sit here and ramble four hours. If we had a three-hour show, I don't think we'd have a problem. But again, a lot of times when we start a show, we don't ever get into like the meat and potatoes of it because we're always going back and forth. But guys... Thanks for watching. I know that, you know, I, I love seeing the same people in here. Congratulations, Michael. Got old Spearhead still in here. Phoenix, Monica, a William stopped by tonight. Guys, thanks for the support. And like he was saying, go to YouTube, The Atomic Bear, next week, okay? It won't be on, you know, certain other channels, and it will not be on The Atomic Bear Facebook. So, Make sure that you do go to the Atomic Bear YouTube channel, subscribe, hit that bell, and me and Jeff will see you right here next week on the Atomic Bear Show. Y'all take it easy, guys. <laughs>